a comprehensive look at trends, fund profiles, and more in exploring ETFs. We're going to look at semiconductor ETFs now with our ETF research director, Nina Mishra, who is here with me. So, semiconductor stocks really surging. Yes, uh, so they surged yesterday um, after it was reported that U.S. and China have agreed to resume their trade talks after the G20 meeting. Mm -hmm. And uh, President Trump also agreed to remove restrictions on Chinese telecom giant Huawei. Mm -hmm. uh, earlier, U.S. companies could not sell equipment to Huawei. Okay. And uh, this was important because Huawei is the largest uh, telecom company in China. It is privately held, but it is uh, reported to be very close to the Chinese government. And it was reported that by the journal that this was one of the preconditions by the Chinese side, removal of restrictions on Huawei. Uh, now, chip companies have a lot of exposure to China uh, because they derive large portions of their revenues from China. China is the biggest chip market in the world, and these companies also have supply chains in China. So that is why chip companies benefited uh, from these developments. Uh, and, uh, you know, for chip companies, while some of the traditional areas like PC have slowed, smartphones too, but many newer growth areas have emerged, like 5G, Internet of Things, virtual reality, self-driving cars. So all those areas require better, more efficient chips. And yesterday that you referred to was July the 1st, just so everybody can follow yes. on the calendar. Uh, at the same time, investors should remember that these chip companies are usually very volatile, more volatile than other traditional technology companies. Mm -hmm. And also till we get uh, a final resolu resolution on the trade conflict and a comprehensive trade deal, these companies may continue to be volatile. Okay. And uh, while China is the biggest market for chip makers, uh, the government there has been trying to reduce reliance on foreign chip suppliers, including American chip, chip suppliers, and promote their uh, homegrown chip industry. So that is also something which investors should remember. All right. As always, you've got some uh, examples of some of these ETFs, starting with the iShares PHLX Semiconductor ETF. The ticker is SOXX. This is the largest semiconductor ETF. It follows a modified market cap weighting, so uh, selects companies according to their market capitalization. And then uh, there's a cap of 8% on individual security so, so as not to give too much exposure to one single company or, or, or a few single uh, individual companies. 47 basis points for expenses. Uh, it's pretty large with 1.5 billion in assets. Now, if you want to learn more about the ETF, you can go to the code page, read the report, articles, and also go to the external home page of iShares. Uh, to learn more about this ETF and other details. If you look at the holdings, well-known semiconductor companies like NVIDIA, Avago, Qualcomm, Texas Instruments, uh, Intel, these are the top holdings. And due to the 8% cap, you will see that they are all uh, closed, not more than 8% uh, at the time of rebalancing. It will come below 8%. All right, Vanek Vectors has one of these too. So this is a market cap weighted ETF without any cap, and it selects 25 largest U.S. listed chip, chip companies. So even if uh, it's a foreign company, but listed in the U.S., you will find it in the ETF. Slightly cheaper with 35 basis points in expense ratio. To learn more about this ETF, again, you can go to the code page, look at the details, holdings, and also visit the external home page of Venek uh, for this ETF. Now, if you look at the holdings, you will see that the ETF is a bit top heavy uh, because there is no cap. It's market cap weighted. Uh, so Taiwan Semi 
which is a Taiwanese company but listed in the U.S., uh, uh, is the top holding with about 12% 12, 12 of assets. Intel, Texas Instrument, NVIDIA, Qualcomm are the other holdings. So as I mentioned, it is a bit top heavy, more concentrated in the bigger companies compared to uh, the earlier one. Okay. Spider S&P Semiconductor ETF is next. XST is the ticker symbol. It is an equal weighted ETF. So it has 35 holdings and because of equal weighted equal weighting, uh, it has more tilt towards smaller companies compared to other market cap weighted chip ETFs. Uh, so when smaller companies do well, this ETF will outperform the other market cap weighted ETFs. 35 basis points in expense ratio. And to learn more, you can go to the code page and State Street uh, Street, Street's web page for this ETF. If you look at the holdings, as I mentioned, it's an equal uh, equal weighted ETF. So you will see all those familiar names, but almost equal weight to all these companies. And you will see some of the not so well known smaller chip companies too in this ETF. Finally, the Invesco Dynamics Semiconductors Portfolio. Ticker is PSI. This is a smart beta ETF. So it selects and weights holdings on the basis of investment merit criteria. It is the most, most expensive of these. It charges 61 basis points in the annual fees and 178 million in assets so far. Uh, to learn more about this ETF, you can go to the code page on zax.com and from there you can use the link to go to Invesco web page for this ETF. Uh, now as I mentioned uh, it is smart beta ETF. It uses a variety of investment merit criteria including price momentum, earnings momentum, quality, management action and value to select and weight holdings. Now, if you look at the holdings, Micron, Analog, Devices, Broadcom, Qualcomm, the familiar uh, chip companies are in the CTA, but you will see different weights assigned to them because of this different weighting, enhanced uh, weighting methodology that the CTF adopts. And how does the performance of all of these compare? So on this slide, I have the performance of uh, all these uh, four ETFs year to date, and I've compared that with the S&P 500 ETF SPY. And you can see that the equal weighted uh, product by State Street XST is the top performer, and uh, the two market cap weighted ETFs come next. Uh, up about 28, 29%, XSD up about 34%, and uh, the Invesco product is up about 25%, whereas the S&P 500 index is up about 19% year to date. Do you own either? I do own uh, the iShares product in the ETF portfolio that I manage. All right, thank you for taking a look at all of these. Don't forget, more ETF information in that section of our website, zax.com. Go to the home page, use the Funds tab in the top toolbar to help get yourself there. Also, don't forget ETF Spotlight. That's Nina's podcast, audio podcast, on a lot of interesting topics dealing with the whole ETF realm. You can access that on our website as well by using the podcast link at the bottom of the home page, and it will take you right to that section. With Nina... I'm Terry Ruffalo.